Hello guys, welcome back to another episode here on African Confessions. There is a message that I want to share with you guys and this message one of our dear brothers sent us this message via an email then one of our admins had to copy and paste that email on my whatsapp number and the message reads like this hello my brother how are you can you please post my own story i always listen to all the episodes that you post on your channel so my brother my story goes on like this for me to be where i am firstly if i didn't even do the rituals that i ended up doing i could have said that it was by the grace of god but i tried to fast forward this is what the high priest told me. He told me that there was a way whereby we could fast forward the blessings of God because he said that from his work, he had seen that God indeed blesses us human beings. We are all given a blessings, but usually God will bless you when you are way older. So he said, do you want to wait until you are very old for God to bless you? I then said, no, I cannot wait for God to bless me when I am very old because I was looking at the situation that was now in our family. And just before my father had passed, away the last thing that he said he said that my son poverty is like a sin poverty is like a sin because we had taken him to this other hospital and they had denied him any kind of medication simply because we were very poor he was just being kept there in the hospital only giving food here and there they would just give him paracetamol paracetamol that we could just go and buy on our own selves so my father didn't die because it was his time but i think that my father passed away because of lack of medicate of medication in our country there's no such thing as health care so if you are poor and you if you fall sick then you, if you do not have money then it will be more like a death sentence to you so when i heard my father saying that being poor was like a sin i then promised myself that i was not going to wait until i had found a very good job i needed to speed up the process so that i can take care of my mother i didn't want my mother to fall sick and to go through that same pain in which my father had died whilst he was in that kind of a situation and even when i look at my father's brothers some of them that had moved out of the village when they heard the sad news that my father had passed away they didn't even have money transport money so that they can come and bury their own brother some of them they even came a year later and that is what poverty will do to you you will find yourself not being able to bury your loved ones but there is another thing about money money can take you anywhere at any moment that you choose to go anywhere you'll find yourself being in that place simply because of money but i didn't know how, how i was going to achieve this goal of me having a lot of money let me go back a little bit in the past when i graduated from high school i then met this other man who had seen my results because our principal at our school had showed him the results so that man then said that he wanted to sponsor me because he was running a program whereby he was sponsoring some poor people from our village since he also came from the same village and he had that desire to have everyone in his village educated and he wanted to make sure that we were all going to be successful because he believed that education was the key to success so i was lucky enough that i was the first amongst the students that he had picked so that he can sponsor me it was really easy for me to get into university since this man was really wealthy and my grades were were really good when i was in university he only sponsored me for the first semester when it was the second semester that was when we received the sad news that the man that wealthy man from our village he had passed away and after he had passed away 
me and my parents we went and we attended that wealthy men's funeral the one that was sponsoring me whilst we were at that funeral the kids then promised me that they were going to continue with their father's dream but a few months later they had forgotten everything i still remember that i once went to their house since i knew where they were staying and they chased me and they said that i was not related to their father so what was i doing at their place when i arrived at their place i really felt sorry for their father because all of his wealth was being squandered there were almost naked ladies that were just walking around the mansion the kids the boys they were having a big party so after they had kicked me out i then went back to the village and it was really painful so i had to drop out of university but by god's grace when i had dropped out of university i quickly found another lecturer who recommended me to this other man who was also wealthy but this man said that he was going to take me to a technical college so that i can learn a life skill whilst i was in that college i used to go to that man's house so when i was with that man i was now in an environment whereby i was able to associate with a lot of rich people and most of these rich people that i was now associating with mostly they were just young boys who grew up with a silver spoon in their mouth i then visited this other man but there was something weird about that guy that i couldn't understand and when i visited him he was like my new friend so that guy he was into dating other boys but what i liked about him is that he would tell me each and everything that was happening in their rich neighborhood i can say that he had the spirit of gossiping whenever i was with him he would always have a brand new scandal that he would want to tell me he knew everything that was going on in their enclosed community so he then told me that this other friend of mine i should not trust him especially if he says that i should come let's say if they are at their house if there is a secret party that is being performed or if i see them slaughtering any kind of animal at their house i should make sure that i will not be part of their ceremony i then said what are you talking about he then told me that the father was a well-known ritualist in the community and he started showing me the houses as we were walking around their neighborhood and he was saying that you see that house they they even perform some rituals even during the day he showed me this other house whereby the mother and the father they go out downtown even though they are rich people when when they go to the downtown they pretend like they are poor people then they will be begging for money and he said that the moment that they get the money they'll bring the money back into their mansion he was even claiming that upstairs they had a room which was always locked that is where they keep the money which someone would have donated to them he even claimed that there was even one time when they went and when they returned they had someone like they had kidnapped a person that was mentally ill and they kept that mentally ill person in their house and after that they then released that mentally ill person so these stories they kept on interesting my mind and from my own poor background my brother i then said if these people are able to enjoy life like this so why can't i just do it pretend that i am very poor then people donate money to me and i'll just use that money for very simple rituals little did i know that there was something that was deeper behind all of those simple rituals that this guy was busy gossiping about i then said so how can i get into this ritual he said no i do not want you to be part of it but this guy the way that he would speak with you he would tell you that it is an evil thing but at the end of the day what i liked about him he would give you a solution he then told me that this other guy that was also staying in that neighborhood he was a priest he was a voodoo priest even though you would never even suspect that this guy he was a voodoo priest because he really looked wealthy and everything that he did was just 
different. At his house, there were no charms, there were no shrines, there were nothing. He then said that if you approach him properly, maybe he will show you the way. So I said, I cannot go there alone because usually rich people, they have this strong bond and they just don't accept any other person into their circle of friends. He then agreed to take me to that priest house. We then went there and as we went there, he then said that make sure that if we get into his house and if he says that he is willing to help you if you then see that the rituals that he is going to perform on you you do not like them just try to say yes otherwise something bad is going to happen to you or something bad is going to happen to your mother because he would have revealed some secrets of his shrine even though at his house there is no shrine it is like an invisible shrine that him only can see where he keeps all of the souls of the people that would have been sacrificed by his customers. We then went there and I was really feeling nervous. When we walked into his mansion, my brother, I looked at the property. I think that the property that was inside the mansion, it was costing millions and millions of naira. After that, my brother, he then said that we had to sit on the couches. We sat and we waited for him and he went upstairs. When he came back, my brother, the clothes that he was wearing, I can say that it seemed as if he had just taken a garment and he then placed that garment inside a can of red paint or a blood because the way that the clothes were smelling it smelled like something that was rotten and it was even dripping i don't know if it was blood or if it was paint but the moment that the blood or the paint will f fall to the ground then it will just disappear he came he then stood next to me and he said that follow me so i followed him as i was walking up the stairs my brother that was the first time in my life that i ever saw a demon and some of the pictures that i used to see my brother they are real most of these demons they do have horns on their head and they have they are very hideous looking creatures you cannot even look at them twice and be normal i just saw that demonic figure as it was sneaking into the house and it started following us upstairs this demonic figure what it was doing was that it was walking across the walls i don't know how to explain it but instead of it walking on the floor like us normal people do it was walking on the wall as it was following us it followed us until we had entered into this other room so when that man was busy assisting me the way that i was kneeling down I was facing the opposite side and I knew that at the back that was where that creature was just hanging just close to the corner of the house so I was really feeling nervous and that priest said that if I was going to continue feeling nervous then he was going to cancel the program that we were doing so I gathered all strength and I tried as I could to make sure that I can concentrate then he touched me on my forehead after it touched me my brother i fell down the next time when i woke up instead of me seeing with two eyes i found myself looking at the world seeing the world with three eyes this changed everything my brother because i didn't even know that a human being has three eyes he only touched me once and i started to see the world with three eyes when i looked around i then saw that in the room in which we were the walls were covered with blood dripping red color that was colored all over the walls of that room that we were in and on the ground there were some candles and then there was this other small shelf that had a lot of african herbs the candles were burning but the smell that were being produced by the candles it was really smelly and i then saw that just in front of me there were some pictures and on each and every picture there was a candle he then said that these pictures that are in front of you do you recognize the people that are captured on the pictures i then said no i do not see anything because the pictures were blurry he then went to that place where there was a little shelf and he mixed some african herbs and he gave me those herbs to drink after he had given me 
I then started to see that on those pictures that were laid in front of me, there were the pictures of my relatives. I saw my mom, my brother, my siblings, and some of my father's brothers. I said, what are they doing on these pictures? Where did you get these pictures? He then said that remain quiet. You are only allowed to speak when you have been spoken to. So he started doing all of his rituals. He then said to me, I want you to point at any picture that you want but when you point at that picture do not look at me and do not look to the side keep on looking at that picture until i would have picked it up and he was using his hands to communicate with me since he saw that i was really nervous i then just looked at this other picture my brother this was the picture of my dear sister i then kept on looking at it and that priest he approached that place where the picture was he removed the candle and he gave me the candle to hold the red candle that was on top of my dear sister's picture after i had handed him the picture he then went and he threw it in a basket but it was an african basket and he closed that basket he then came back to me and he pointed at this other candle that was burning and he said that i want you to go there so that you can light this candle that you are holding i want you to use that candle to light the candle that you are holding but i had to crawl until i had reached the place where that candle was burning whilst i was just next to that candle that was burning my brother that was when i saw that just behind that candle there was a big python all along i was thinking that maybe it was a stool or something that someone can sit on but this was a very huge python and when i kept on looking at that python i saw that this python it was really full it seemed as if it had even eaten something that was big as a human being that python just looked at me and i had been told not to be afraid not to talk unless i had been spoken to so i remained quiet and after i had made sure that i had lit the candle that i was holding i looked at the priest and he pointed the spot where he wanted me to go and kneel he then said that i want you to hold this candle until it has switched off he then went out of that room and he left me my brother when he came back he had a very small plate that had a few pieces of meat and he said that i had to eat the meat after that he mixed more herbs from that shelf that had african charms and herbs inside of it and he gave me to drink and he said that i was going to sleep in that room all alone and I was not supposed to place that candle on the ground, otherwise I might face the risk of being attacked by all of the things that I had seen in that room. I was really nervous. I felt my whole body vibrating and shaking out of fear. That man, my brother, when he went out of that room, everything that was in there, like the candle that we lit in that room, they all switched off expect for the candle that I was holding. As I was holding that candle, my brother, I felt really tired, but I couldn't feel tired or to sit down because I was afraid of the consequences. This man, he had locked the door from the outside. I kept on holding that candle, and the more that I was holding it, I would even feel people that were standing behind me not knowing if these were demons or if they were real people these people what they would do is that they would come and they would lean over so much that i could actually see a shadow of someone that would be leaning just right next to my shoulders i felt so afraid and when that candle was about to die down that was when i saw that big snake unrolling itself and it started crawling slowly it then approached the place where i was kneeling it then opened its mouth and it started to eat that candle that was about to die down i then collapsed what happened next is that it i woke up and it was early in the morning that priest he was standing over me but what shocked me is that this man as he was standing over me i then saw that underneath his garment he was not wearing anything i was really scared and i kept on thinking that maybe he had done something bad to me but as i was feeling my body 
I touched my backside just to feel if there was any pain, wanting to see if this man had penetrated me through the backside. I touched and I pressed a little bit and I felt that I was still okay. That priest then laughed at me and he said that, oh, so you think that I have divergent you? No, I am never going to do such a terrible thing to you. He then said that I was supposed to rise up for my fortunes. It smiled upon my life. God had, sp God had smiled upon me and very soon I was going to experience the full blessings of heavens because we had ac because we had assisted God to open up the windows of heaven so I should get ready for the rain. But before the rain would start, he said that there was going to be a period of drought in my family. And for this drought to go away, the blood of my sister had to be spilled. He told me the way that my sister was going to die. And just like he told me, that is how my sister died. On the day that my sister was buried, my brother, it was only I who could see that inside a coffin there was nothing. I knew that once her body was inside that room, there were some rituals that were going to be performed on her body, and then God was going to start to bless me. So, my brother, it has been a very long journey and a painful one, knowing that I loved my dear sister so much, but I didn't have any choice because when I went there, I thought that maybe it was just going to be something that was easy but it has taken me to places whereby I didn't even think that normal human beings can show such behavior, animalistic behavior that we have done and things that I am not even proud of, things that cannot be said in public. Those are the things that I have witnessed.